Hello, here's my vintage toy store and what's sold, episode three. I'm Joshua Tatsui. I run a vintage toy store on eBay. I buy vintage toys from anywhere and I sell them on eBay. I like to share one cool item that I have come across or found before I get into what's sold every episode. This is a 1964 original Aurora Superman model. Very rare. It's unpainted, rough condition. You can see the glue marks. Um, still has a 75 cent sticker tag when my parents bought it, you know, 25 years ago uh, from like a flea market or something. But very rare 1964 original Superman Aurora model kit in unpainting condition. And now on to the exciting part of what's sold. It is Thanksgiving weekend, and so a lot of small vintage toys, you know, $20 to $50 Christmas presents have been selling. Not necessarily huge items, but a lot of items. This is a 1995 original Toy Story toy. This is Rex. He actually glows in the dark and has a clamping jaw. Very cool. Still in package from 1995. Up next is another $15 item. This is a Mickey Mouse hat from Disney World, went for $15 as well. Up next is a super cool Corgi miniature fire truck engine. It is a 1 50th scale. It is the under fire Persh and Sons sedan cab pumper Memphis engine, number 15. Very cool, very ornate, very detailed, went for $125. Corgi is a very fancy British die cast metal cars company. A little fancier than Hot Wheels. A lot fancier than Hot Wheels. Up next is a 1941 Lincoln Continental. This one is made by Greenlight. It is a 143 scale. I've sold a lot of these 143 scales. They are display pieces, not toys. It's a die cast detailed car. This one happens to be on the cheaper end. It went for $26. I have sold 143 scales like this for hundreds of dollars. Greenlight happens to be a cheaper option. Up next is a DVD set. It is the Lord of the Rings trilogy, a red, green, and blue set. It is a 12 disc series, uh, 12 disc set. It went for $24. Very nicely encased, very pretty. I didn't get into the Lord of the Rings until I was in college, but very much liked them. Reminds me of Star Wars a little bit. Up next is another DVD set, Blu-rays. However, don't be fooled by the Twilight from the 2010s. This Twilight is the seasons one through three from 1959. In Blu-ray, all black and white, and went for $75. Three seasons, 1959, the Twilight Zone. Up next from the world of Call of Duty, I grew up playing Call of Duty on the Xbox 360, so when I found this, I thought it was very cool. And I specifically started playing with MW2. This is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This is a pair of night vision goggles. They went for $90. Very, very cool set. This back here is the battery pack. And then it kind of reminds me of the iClops when we were growing up. Very cool set. Video game thing made into a toy. Up next is an Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber. It is spring-loaded, made by Hasbro, and it went for $20. <laughs> Going along with the Christmas holiday season, this is a The Ventures Christmas album set, sold for $16. Up next is a Blade Blade. This is the Maximum Garuba and went for $35. When I was learning about these, they are quite complex. They have the older versions have metal pieces inside along with spinner because when they spin as a top, they eventually pop apart when depending on who wins if you are not familiar with the tv show it's a game you spin them in a little arena and they battle and bounce against each other and then whoever wins the opponent's blade blade pops apart up next is a vintage yon jumping dog tin wind-up toy the older ones are tin which is nice being made in japan makes them more collectible this happens to be the yon brand which i've sold a couple of and this jumping dog still works <laughs> up next is a 1973 matchbox 
This one specifically is the Super King Ford Scammel Tractor K17 with a red trailer. This is die cast. It is an older Matchbox, so this individually went for $15. Matchbox is similar to Hot Wheels. This one specifically I picked up at an estate sale out in the suburbs of Chicago with my dad. Probably paid a dollar or two. Up next is a 2012 Hallmark ornament of Catwoman. Pretty good condition or perfect condition for used and it went for $18. It's pretty big too and it's glossy. Up next is a random lot of seven Star Wars figures from 1977 all the way through 1983. This lot went for $40 because they're not in the greatest condition. Some of them need to be tightened or their heads are loose. So um, these seven figures went for $40. They are from the original era of figures. We have Chewbacca, a Empire Starfighter pilot. This looks like a Hoth officer from the Rebel base, not sure which one. This is Hammerhead from the Cantina, a Stormtrooper, a Tusken Raider, and I believe this is Leia. Very cool set, some of my favorite stuff to sell and keep. Going along with that Star Wars theme is a set of four graphic novels of Star Wars made by Archie Goodwin. The comic book brand is Dark Horse Comics. This set went for $45, all in color. Volume 1 through 4. Very cool set. Some cool cover art too. Up next, here are two Rokenbach rails. They are probably from the mid-2000s. They had like programming and ac ac different activities that you could set up for these to control their movements and stuff. These two go on a rail, so you could be going up and down and around. Um, battery operated and everything. One for $30. Up next is a Rokenbach car lot set. It went for $60. It has one, two, three, four, five, five vehicles and then a green trailer. Again from the mid 2000s. Battery operated little vehicles that can be programmed. A little cartridge goes into there and then it moves on command. And now we'll get into the part that we always have, the train section. Again, I have sold tens of thousands of dollars worth of trains this year. I just happened to run into train collectors. A Texaco special run made by Al's Custom Train Cars went for $35. Up next is a deluxe regular standard train cars. These ones are um, New York Central Systems. This one for $20. These are all N scale by the way. Up next is a an Atlas Piggy Bank Flat, Pennsylvania line. It has two truck trailers on top of a flatbed. Next we have two N scale Atlas locomotives. These ones are a GP30 on the Burlington route. This one is a Trainmaster made by Atlas as well. It is a Pennsylvania, black and yellow, red and gray. Went for $110, went for $80. Great trains made by Atlas. Up next is a set of lifelike N-scale locomotives. Lifelike is the brand. This is an FA1, FB1 set. They are for the Pennsylvania lines, black and yellow. Nice set, went for $140. Up next is another locomotive set. This is the CNW Chicago and Northwestern F7A, F7B set made by Intermountain. These again are N-scale locomotives. This set went for $300. And what's crazy is not only did one set sell, but two sets sold. The same exact CNW, F7A, F7B locomotive sets by Intermountain. So $600 among these four trains. Insane. And these, since retail at $85, have nearly doubled in value per train. So they're about $150 per train now originally $85 so up next I have four different HO scale uh, train cars most of them are box cars all in the range of 15 to 30 dollars so not expensive ones they are not locomotives they are the bigger scale HO so here I have one made by Ertl it is an AT and SF so Santa Fe a box car it's a 50 foot double sheathed box car then by Red Caboose is a tanker HO scale, a 10,000 gallon 
tank car. And then by Lifelike, the Proto 2000 series, another 10,000 gallon tank car, and this one is Amico. My dad worked for Amico back in the day, or owned an Amico gas station. The last one is a reefer. It is an HO scale refrigerated box car. Up next, we have two Lifelike branded Proto 2000 series locomotives. The first one we have went for $75. It is an S1 locomotive. It is a limited edition Chicago and Northwestern or CNW locomotive number 1213. The, this is the outer car and then here's the engine underneath. Very cool sets, very cool boxing. The second one is an SW9 1200. Again, one for $45. This is a HO scale locomotive. Here's the engine. This is a Santa Fe. And then this one is actually built. So the engine is not here. It is inside already. Already put together. This one's pre-owned. Up next is another Chicago and Northwestern or CNW set. This one is made by Kato, a very nice Japanese brand. This one is a rail diesel car. It is a set C, not locomotives. Very nice box. Went for $160. Up next is an Overland. Overland is a, a very high tier, fancy line of train cars. This one is a caboose. It is a Milwaukee Road ribbed side caboose. Very nicely wrapped and taken care of. And the last of our trains, the most expensive single train. The other ones were about $150 max. This one for one locomotive is $200. This is an Athern Genesis line premium trains. And this is a Grand Trunk Western F3A Phase 2 locomotive. A nice heavy duty HO scale locomotive. Again, one for $200, made by Athern. This is their Genesis line. Their quote on the box is, as close as it gets to real. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please click here for more. And like and subscribe. <laughs>